So welcome to the end of the transfer window of season 2045. The first season in the series where we are doing four episodes through the season. If you are enjoying these short episodes, please make sure you do go down and drop a like on it. And just comment below, let me know how you are finding it. Let me justify, because a couple of people actually tweeted me asking why we've um, gone to the short episodes. YouTube ranks videos on retention rate. Now, the retention rate on this series is actually quite good. I think it's about 9 minutes, 10 minutes per video. So I'm thinking if I can release four videos instead of two a season, and they are between 12 and 20 minutes long, hopefully you guys stick around for the whole video, keep up to date with exactly what's going on, get more detail because we're coming back more often each at each point and yeah hopefully youtube then goes Do you know what this content's actually quite good promotes it along and yeah the channel continues to grow we continue to grow as a community please make sure you do go down if you see people in the comments you've not seen before um make sure you do interact put some comments uh, responding to other people if you agree with their comments etc make sure you do comment that below it all helps the channel out so yeah we're going to be reviewing the end of the transfer window i'm on the 2nd of september we are jumping back for a couple of screen grabs first off so the 15th of june we got the club rankings etc so the club itself, we have moved up two places to 32nd in the new European club rankings. Very nice, almost inside the top 30 of clubs inside Europe. In terms of competition-wise, we've moved up four places to 24th in the rankings now. So if we go under the rankings here, you can see we are just behind the Finnish division, just behind the Israeli, Slovakian, the Greek, and we've just overtaken the second tier in France, the Czech Republic. Is that the top flight? It is. Is. So we've overtaken the top flight in Czech Republic, top flight in Croatia, top flight in Romania, second tier in Italy, and we're well ahead of the second tier in Norway now. So we really are progressing in the right direction. In terms of coefficient-wise, we stay in 22nd. We will start this... Um, sorry, we will be at 22.875 points at the minute. So we do need to... Um, Get some points, see where we can go. Um, nobody behind us would overtake us if we all went in next season with the same points. So it is just about us closing the gap and maybe sneaking into the top 20. I do demand we have a good run this year in the Champions League. It's just a demand. It's a demand. Now, I say it's a demand, but we have just lost our unbeaten run. After 107 games undefeated in the league, we lost 1-0 to B36. And this resulted in a tactical change. This was the last time this two defence midfielders was used. We just didn't look good. I can't turn around and say we completely deserved anything. 13 shots from them, 18 for us. It, it was just poor. It honestly was just poor. Okay, so let's review transfer side of things before we look at how Champions League qualifying has gone then. Um, there's been some big deals done, some big deals. First on the outs. So Thorsby has gone on loan to TB for the rest of this season and next season. I do think he has something about him, I really do. If he can develop, play good football at TB, we'll see what happens. Uh, Turo has gone to Groningen for one and a half million. Maybe it's silly to let him go. Six for five would have been a towering central defender for us, but in just. I just didn't get excited by the fact of playing him, to be honest with you. Maybe we've let someone go who should have stuck around, I don't know, but he's gone now. <laughs> Simple as that. Uh, Paulo Eduardo and Lervig have both gone on um, loan as well. Now, Paulo Eduardo further down has been sold, but they they went on loan. Uh, Ezekiel Juarez, who we brought in on a free transfer, after playing no games at all for any team within the club, we sold for 1.6 million plus 50% of next sale. Now, maybe he could have developed into something, but that's very quick profit 
plus the potential profit in the future as well. So he's gone. <laughs> just as simple as that. Also going off to one of our feeder clubs in Esbjerg in Denmark is Fritzov as well. Again, I'm just hoping he can now get some first-team football and hopefully see him develop nicely. And They are playing in the top flight. Um, no, they're in the second flight. I thought they were in the top flight. Either, either way, he's getting some first-team football either way. Good job, mate. Not knowing where my players have gone. Um, a few more loan signings. Logic has gone. Bjorn Hag has gone out on loan. Now, we brought in a player. I didn't have enough spaces in registration for the Champions League. And he really got upset about that. Really got upset about that. So, we end up sending him out on loan to Portugal. Um, to be honest with you, if you just get some football, keep him happy and maybe he'll come back. But a lot of my players were really upset that we weren't, um, that we upset him. They were unhappy with my treatment. There was nothing I could do. Nobody within my squad I wanted to drop out of the Champions League registration for him. So it was a tough call, but we've sent him out on loan for the season. And also John uh, Nolser, our winger, has gone out on loan as well. He dropped down in the pecking order as well. Didn't class as a homegrown player, so we just couldn't register him. So we've sent him out on loan to Norseland. Um, he just... He never did it. One goal, four assists in eight games there. And then this season, one goal and one assist in seven games. It's not enough if I want to have a successful team. My wingers need to be contributing. Midskugan has set that bar quite high in that situation. Now, Mirasan was on loan at Vikinger Goethe and they went and offered him a contract because his contract was running out. Um, he accepted, so I said, you know what, you can have him now. So, Mirasan, who we picked up on a free transfer in 44, one year later, as I said I hoped would happen, I did say I hoped would happen, is now sticking around in the league playing for Vikinger Goethe, so I'm absolutely delighted with that. Uh, Ricardo Hernandez has gone out on loan to EB, so again, staying in the league, building up his homegrown status. Hopefully he can do well for EB. I will extend the loan for next season if he does do well, but I think EB are in Europe this year. Um, Sigvardson's going to be 36, he's a youngster. Uh, Fredericksburg as well, gone on loan to them. And Johansson's gone on loan. And at the bottom, Paulo Eduardo sold in the end for 1.4 plus 50% of next sale. We paid half a million for him. We sent him on loan for a few years to Denmark, to Esbjerg. He's now gone back to Denmark for 1.1 up front. Rising to 1.5, 50% of next sale. It's profit on a player who I didn't see great things from when he was at um, Esbjerg. They did go in the top flight. They Got relegated again. I knew they were in the top flight at some point. Went back down. Brilliant. But now onto the ins. This is where it gets exciting. We've made a lot of ins. And they are some big, big ins. So first off, coming in, they're playing our youth team for now. Is Nasir Ben Ahmed, 18-year-old Tunisian. Joined us for 400k. Mentally is why I signed him. Mentally is fantastic. Um, I do think he could develop into something quite well. Quite, quite well. Quite good. He's six foot four as well. So we'll keep an eye on him. Hopefully he keeps developing. Hopefully he becomes a player who could potentially push into the first team. The next sign is one of the big ones. Sterler returns. I said we were having a big name coming back. And Paul Endretor Bjornsson Sterler has come back to AB. So he left us for Benfica. He's come back for 12 million. We had a 50% next sale. So he's ended up costing us 6 million to come back. Um, he spent one full season at Benfica and then half a season before joining us again. So I'm absolutely over the moon that he's come back because he is a class above. We saw when he was with us before, always getting assists, always doing well. So he joins us for six million, basically. The next one, Destiny DeVault comes in and 18 years old. Isn't a world beater, very decent acceleration and pace, decent as a winger. Uh, joins us for 900k. My hope with him is he will end up moving to another club in the league. Um, I don't think mentally he's got the mental attributes to play for our club. But he might go to someone else in the league. Um, the next player coming in, Hajak Split, is Arkovic. 18 year old Croatian, really talented, good personality as well. Again, a few players coming in with good personalities. 
great physicals, very good mentals and good technicals for a striker as well. I really do think this is a very solid player. Very solid player. 3.2 million spent on him, 18 years old. There's potential there. Now the next one is our second 12 million spending of the summer. Keith Franklin is an English under-20 international who won the Golden Boot at the under-20 World Cup Championships. Something. He played in something in the summer because he came up, he won the Golden Boot. But check him out. Good personality, great physicals, quick as can be. Mentally insane work rate, teamwork, his determination, his composures, etc. Technically insane as well. 12 million on this kid, I think, is an absolute steal. An absolute steal. And I really do think we've picked up a gem here with Needle Scar now 29 years old. By the time Franklin hits the age of 20, Lil Scar will be 31. That transition, I hope, can take place. Really, really impressed with that signing. Fernando Enrique comes in. Another player who's joined us for our youth team. Looks an insanely good, talented central defender. Is only six foot. Um, but all round, I think, very talented. Half a million, there's a huge chance of profit there i think he will end up leaving us i don't think he'll end up featuring in the first team to be honest i think clubs are going to come sniffing for him being left footed as well i think clubs are going to come sniffing before we even have a chance to use him the only fact that i do think he might stick around is his perfectionist personality does mean he might develop over the next year very very nicely indeed and um, the next player you can't quite see him, but he is returning. Now, our goalkeeper made a very bad mistake. So, joining us back from Roma is Nen Talon. The guy who came in to replace um, uh, Monksgaard before, before leaving us, joins us for his third spell at the club. Obviously, we paid one and a half million, sold him for Jean Gordon's two and a half, signed him back for a million, sold him for two, have now signed him back again for two million at the age of 28 years old, six foot four, absolute powerhouse. The mistakes that my goalkeeper was making forced my hand into bringing in um, Nantalan. 60,000 a week, so he's one of our highest earners, but when he was at the club before, he was a very very solid goalkeeper and i decided to spend that money so next player is ricardo hernandez who we did look at has gone out on loan eb we spent a million on him determined personality decent physicals decent mentals decent technicals i think it's a gem coming from peru a million i think it's money well well spent and then the final signing another player returning to the club is Henry Perret. Now, when we sold him to Porto, I did say maybe we've made a mistake because he was developing very, very nicely. Well, we brought him back for five million. Uh, bear in mind, we had 50% of next sale, so it's only cost us two and a half million. And I think him and Mark Watson in central defence, Nain Talon behind them, um, Gutierrez in defensive mid, Sterler in central mid, Lethal Scar up top, Midskugan on the wing. Uh, Hansen on the left back. We we piecing together a team of players who had been leaving us, doing well elsewhere, and then coming back. You can see he was playing for Porto. He was playing. Then they sent him out on loan to AZ Alkmaar. But he's come back now to us. And honestly, I think we've pieced together a very, very good side. So since you were last with us, and we we got a victory against um, NSI away from home, 2-1, Madsen and Midskugan, before losing a B36. Now, this B36 game was the one where it made me think we needed to adjust the tactics. Sterling had come in, who naturally is centre midfielder. I did question, should we go back to the original tactic, the one we've been using in the past, and maybe the extra quality in the team now would see us through. We got 2 0 victory over HB in the first game with that tactic, before a 1 0 victory over EB, then a 3 0 victory over TB, and then a 6 0 victory over Scala. Now, what I would say in these games is we had heavily rotated because we were playing in the Champions League qualifying rounds during these fixtures. 
So Champions League qualifying started against Dynamo Batumi. And we got a 3-0 victory. And in this game, I actually started Sterling in this defensive midfield deep-line playmaker role. And he got two assists. 3-0 victory. We looked good. But again, we weren't creating many chances. We had an XG of 1.93. We weren't creating what I wanted. Now, we then travelled away from home and got a 1-0 victory with Lethal Scar on the score sheet, assisted by Sterler. Now, moving Sterler in that centre midfield position here, we managed to put our XG up to 2.72, and we looked decent. Now, they actually dominated possession, which made me look at the tactic a little bit more and see what we needed to adjust going into the next round. And going in that next round, up against Applewell of Cyprus, we got a 4-1 first leg victory with Pereira getting his first goal since coming back, Gongora, the young Spanish winger on the score sheet, Mark Quadson and Franklin on the score sheet there. Lethal Scar didn't get a goal. He really has struggled this year compared to previous seasons. But with next year 3.49 and 62% possession, I started to get a bit more pleased with how the tactic was looking. Now, my happiness continued with a 63% possession game, but an XG of only 1.93 saw us score, score five goals. Now, Peluso in centre midfield, the Italian got a goal. Um, Mohamed at right back got himself a goal. Midskugan and then Franklin on the score sheet. And then to top things off, Sundstrom in 90th minute from the right wing, left footed, in off the post, saw us go through 9 1 on aggregate. Next up was the Croatian Giants. Now, I say Croatian Giants. We decided that in the first leg, we would absolutely smash Dynamo Zagreb. 6-0. Lidl Scarra with a hat-trick, Mick Skugan with two, and Pereira on the score sheet as well saw us absolutely dominate. Uh, Sterler's out injured, so Peluso stepped into the central midfield role. We had an XG of 3.1. 47 percent possession so they actually had more of the ball but we were just we were lethal we were lethal and in the first half of the season we were not scoring when we were getting the chances we were in this game now in the second leg i heavily rotated the side because i was trying to focus on um the cup game we had coming up, which we'll look at in a second. And, yeah, we ended up losing the game 1-0. We were already through 6-0 in the first leg, going through 6-1 on aggregate into the Champions League group phase. phase sorry. And, yeah, it was disappointing to lose the game, but we did heavily rotate. But we are in to the group stage. And for the rest of this season, I will see us come up against Porto away from home to start before Cluj at home, who knocked out Celtic in the qualifying, Benfica at home, Barcelona at home, then Harkin away, who we do all for last season, and then Bournemouth away before we finish up at home to PSV and away to Real Madrid. Now, I have said we have to get to the knockout rounds, in my opinion, this season. It's just needed. It really, really is just needed. Coefficient-wise, us going through into the group stage, the Seals get 2.875 points so far this season, which sees us actually currently overtaking Israel. Um, we're not overtaking anyone else. We are catching some teams. I would say that Bulgaria are very close behind us as well, so we do need to make sure we don't let them catch us up. Um, just out of curiosity then, I do want to see how the other teams have done. But first off, let's just quickly look at the cup. So we went through 3-2 against Vikinga Goethe in the semi-finals. Goals from Midskugan and Mishan. But you will see we are playing against our B team in the final. Because in the semi-finals, our B team beat KI, the first team of KI, 4-1. One an absolute demolition job season A B versus A B two final. If they could qualify for Europe, I'd let them win, but they can't, so we're gonna to have to batter them, I'm afraid. But let's just check see how KI, for example, have been doing in Europe this pre-season then. Um so they went through in the no, they went out to a Slovakian side in the qualifying before going into the conference qualifying and going out to Kazakhstan Ekstana 4-2 on aggregate that's disappointing so they basically didn't get us any points 
Vinga Goethe. Um, they went through in the first leg against Belarus inside. It is, yes, they went through 3 2 before coming up against Braga. Winning the first leg away from home before losing at home. Um, and I think it was EB. I think it was EB who were the next ones. It is EB. And they got drawn against Go Ahead Eagles and ended up going out 7 0 on aggregate. So, once again. It's up to us to fly that flag for the Fair Islands. It, it, it's a nice challenge to keep leaving us here. It, it's definitely a nice challenge. But the team's looking decent. The tactic is looking solid. It really is. We just need to keep pushing on and hopefully start picking up some results. We have had some injuries recently. Um, Mohammed's been out, who's been playing right back for us and doing a very solid job. Considering we only paid 20k for him, I have been turning down 9 million over the summer window. Um, the other person I want to mention is Gonzalez, who we've just turned down 19 million. I did agree to sell him for 15 at the start of the summer window. But I've decided I'm going to just completely dig my feet in and keep the squad I had going into this Champions League group stage. So I just refuse to sell him. We might have to let him go at the end of the season, but for now, he's sticking around. And hopefully, a good Champions League run might convince him to stick around. He does have two and a half seasons left, so we can sell him next summer if we have to. But I'd rather we didn't, to be honest, because we've had quite a few injuries recently. And... He is one of our best players, and I don't want to have to look for another defensive mid. Um, now, weirdly, people are actually happy that I've refused to let him go, so maybe they do see that if he sticks around, it'll benefit us long term. So, so far this season, and top goal scorer is Lethal Scar with 23, and then you have Midskugan with 15, and then um, Mishan with 14, and then Gongora and Peluso with 6, and also Sundstrom. In terms of assists, again, with 23 now, Midskugan, he is just, he's just insane, isn't he? Like, when you look at his ratings, 12 in 17 games in the league, 8 goals, 20 in 22 last year, he's just a class player for us, he really is. But um, that's the end of the transfer window. That is our team going into this Champions League group stage. Hopefully we can do it. Hopefully we can secure the league title. We are 10 points clear with six games to play. I've been Paul, Arsenal's the North man. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.